Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. I am looking for an efficiency four book. You've obviously been AFK here. Yeah, I've been AFK for a little while. Um, there we go. I'm trying to upgrade some of these picks so that they're more useful. Um, there we go. As well as repairing the picks that we we have gotten pretty low. Yeah, my pick is very is well pretty much useless. Yeah, I've got eighty four levels right now, so. Jeez. That's a lot. I wish you could just dump the levels. I wish you could just put the pick in a workbench and pour your levels into it sort of thing. It would be nice. You know I mean? Fortune on breaking, mending, efficiency five. There we go. So now we got another pick that's good to go. I've got a silk touch pick that is fully recharged. Does not have unbreaking on it, though. We're gonna put unbreaking on it. Um, Shouldn't you have that, like from your fishing? Yeah, I need to. I, I gotta go down and, and look at all the the items just to make them last. Let's see. Come on, unbreaking three. There we go. It's so funny, like because the levels are exponential. Like how quickly you can drop levels and not really, you know, gain as much out of what you're really trying to do. Yeah, yeah. Like you, yeah. I know what you mean. Like the like level one, it takes like a millisecond to get. Right, right. Yeah, I was on level eighty four, and I basically put together a pretty good pick, and I'm at forty six. Which hey, that's fine. Forty about forty levels. Great. The thing is, it took hours to get from. 46 to 80 something what it would have taken like an hour to get from zero to 40 right yeah you know, like different. honestly you probably should be dumping your levels as much as possible yeah you're but doing this but you're when, AFK, when I just so go, not... yeah when i'm afk it's not really something that's gonna happen oh well what are you gonna do it's you take the yeah. good with the bad right I just wonder uh, how, how much I'm screwing up Breon when uh, like he tries to jump on and play and he can't sleep and I'm like, Haha, sucker. Uh, do you get like messages? Can, can we no, sleep? No, I've never actually had a message, but I've seen that he was uh, he was on before and I was like, I wonder if he's been trying to sleep this whole time. <laughs> uh, there we go. So I got to tell you, I made the uh, the decision to do the quote unquote. A redneck upgrade, and I am so happy with it. And it a makes redneck feel like upgrade? A yep. What are you talking about? Bought myself an inflatable hot tub. Oh, my God. Did you really? Oh, it is fantastic. So I've tried one of these, and I know someone that has had one, and they had no nothing good to say after a year. Uh, so I'm I mean, curious. I'd be curious as to why. And how much they paid for it too? Because like, uh, like three hundred, I think, is what right. they paid for. Yeah, it. that's what I paid for mine. Um, it leaked repeatedly, like constantly was leaking. Um, so in indoor hot tub. Oh, my, that I, leaks. mine is not indoor. Okay, well, oh, yeah. I mean, that's that's probably a good thing, right? Um, but I mean, I guess you know, most people probably put these things indoor, right? I don't um, think I don't think most by any means. Serious I did dedication. It. I what, did it. What'd you do? I. Completely used up a diamond hoe. Oh, yeah. I forgot that you've been working on that for a long yeah. time. Serious dedication, man. Um, so, yeah, it leaked a lot. Uh, the pump broke four different times. There is no warranty on the pump. Um, Mine, mine's got like a year warranty on the pump. And on okay. the tub itself. Okay. Um, yeah, but it broke three times. Uh, and every time like they would call... Like, I, like it was something like there was supposed to be a warranty, but then they said like you still had to pay. It was like sixty dollars shipping or something like that to to send it there and then get it sent back or something like that. So even though I think there was a warranty, but there was like shipping that was involved. Um, I mean, hmm. I honestly figure for three hundred bucks, even if we get one year out of it, okay. I mean, yeah, I bought <laughs> several of those like inflatable above ground pools. 
that they sell at Walmart that are like three hundred bucks, and it's like it's. I mean, there's nothing fancy about it, um, but it's like, yeah, this isn't gonna last more than if it might last two years. Basically, is the way I always looked at it. Right, right. I'm not looking at this as it's not like a long term investment. <laughs> well, I remember when I was a kid, like when you buy the above ground pool. Even though it was ghetto, it was it was a, something that was supposed to last twenty years. Oh yeah, I had an above ground pool grow, growing up, but not an inflatable one. It was well, sure, you know the right. metal sided one. And, yeah, exactly. You know, and, our, and ours That's did. It, la- it lasted actually about twenty years. And uh, yeah. it actually, a tr- I think a windstorm knocked a tree down onto it, and hmm. my parents tried to get it replaced under like home insurance, and they wouldn't replace it. And by that time, my sister and I were like graduated from college, and they were like, "There's no point in us." Right, getting this right. pool fixed up anymore. I mean, those were like three thousand bucks or something back in the day, though, right? I don't even know what they paid for it. I'd have to look, but yeah, that I mean, that figure seems to be what I would think it would cost. Right. You know. See, like, I mean, I I've always wanted a pool, um, but I've always wanted uh, after having that above ground pool as a, as a child because I had we had the same same sort of thing you're talking about. Um, I always wanted to have an oh, in-ground pool. A real in-ground. One of my friends yeah. had a, an in-ground pool. Sadly, I didn't meet her until I was like, you know, at the end of my college uh, career. So it's not like it was. I, I feel like back in high school, it was so much more fun to throw pool parties and stuff. Once you were in college right. and, and all, it was you're too busy to be like constantly at the same person's house with a pool party. But right. she had a huge in-ground pool and she loved it and used to invite us over to it all the time, like when we could go. But at the same time, she lived in kind of like this little suburb, and pretty much her backyard consisted of the pool. Right. Yeah, like, I mean, so if I, if I did it around here, I'd want to put it, like, basically, like, in between my my house and my grandmother's house, where there's plenty of, like, open land. Um, so, I mean, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't take up the whole yard, would not suddenly become a pool. There'd be, there's plenty of room for this sort of thing, basically. Um, here, but uh, I don't know what it costs. I've never actually like I've never priced it out. Even though this is something I've always wanted, I've never actually looked into it to price it out to see. I imagine it's like sixty thousand or something like that. If I had to guess, I don't have any idea though. I, I don't know. Do sixty thousand sounds kind of ridiculous to me because you could build houses for less than sixty thousand dollars. Can you? Yeah, sure. Don't you watch tiny house shows? Granted, they're tiny, <laughs> but still like. Okay, you're... well, I don't think that I wouldn't. I don't count the tiny house as a house. That's I'm, a shed. I'm stuck. Uh, but, but I'm saying that, like, I, I don't think it, I can't imagine why it costs 60 grand. You dig a hole, you're filling it with, you know, concrete or cement or whatever. Like, why was that going to be 60 grand? I don't know. I mean, I don't know what it costs. I just, this is just what's in my head. I've always thought that's what, cause I mean, if it's, let me, let if it's like 20 grand, well, what up. do you think it is? You cost, think it's like 20 grand? Uh, I would say like probably 10 to 15. Cost of in ground. If it's 10 or 15, I feel like I've really been living the wrong life. I uh, get a fast free estimate. I don't think you'll be able to Google it. Pool, pool warehouse. I don't know how you can buy an in ground pool um, or what if you buy one, what the steps are. But the Google ads that come up, the most expensive one on the corner, uh, the most expensive one is 23 grand. But that's like indoor. But the base one seemed to be between seven and between six and seven, actually. There's no way but, I can get. But I don't an know how you could just pool purchase pool. a pool, an in-ground pool, quote unquote. Okay. Uh, maybe. Yeah. I mean, that's it. it. Does look like that's what it is. I don't believe. I don't believe I can get an in-ground pool put into my yard for seven grand. Stainless. Because uh... you know, whenever you 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 watch plenty of these house flipping shows i've never seen them put in a pool i've seen them buy them with a pool yeah but that's one of the things they always talk about is the biggest money waster as far as added value to a home is a pool you know what i'm talking about in most cases expect a small fiberglass pool shell without delivery to cost between nine and thirteen, a medium between twelve and sixteen, and a large between sixteen and twenty-four. Fiberglass. Yeah, I, I, I thought this is a poured concrete sort of thing. I, 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 I don't really know. Yeah, this doesn't sound like what what I'm talking Assisted about. Like every... installations typically cost between thirty and fifty-two k. This is just a random website I'm, I'm on, so I have no idea what this. See, that sounded more like my numbers, though. Turnkey vinyl, turnkey vinyl pool liner, thirty-five to fifty-five thousand. 
but I don't know about just getting a. I don't. Why didn't somebody just give me like I'm a company that does it for an average pool? Expect to pay between twenty five and fifty. Okay, so that's about what, what I was saying. Said. Eh, kind of what you were saying. I don't even remember what you said. Pretty much exactly. <laughs> what I, said. <laughs> I said around sixty. Um, so I mean, so I if feel you like take you if you take the top end that that thing said it was going to be and add some to it, yep, pretty much right around what you were saying. I still, I mean, but you're still saying words like fiberglass right now, which I don't want a fiberglass pool below ground. I want a fucking poured concrete pool. I mean, maybe they are fiberglass, and I just don't realize that they're fiberglass. I no, no every idea. pool, you know, you've been in a pool. I, I uh, so, anyways, back to your your redneck story. I've 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 hijacked the redneck story. I mean, my redneck story pretty much concluded with what I had done. <laughs> I will tell you, it's kind of amazing to sit in my backyard in D.C. in an inflatable hot tub in the backyard. Because it, it feels ghetto. It feels so out of place. Like, no, well, yeah. the, the thing is, it actually it doesn't look ghetto at all. It looks quite amazing, actually. Uh, Does it? Yeah, yeah. It actually fits in very well with uh, the yard. And I, I, got, I bought, uh, like, I went to Lowe's and bought a... Uh, uh, green like indoor outdoor carpet and threw it underneath it so it actually looks like it was almost like made uh, to be there yeah 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 i wish it was blue because they the different brands depending on which brand you buy they're either like green blue or brown and unfortunately my so where'd you get it at was this like a amazon. walmart thing amazon okay you bought amazon okay yeah, yeah it, was, it was on sale I, I mean amazon. i see him at i see him at walmart all the time in the same section that the the blow up above yeah, ground pool. And thing Walmart is. usually has the Coleman ones, I think it is. And they're the like the green, the dark green ones. And they uh -huh. look a little bit more it looks like more obviously like it's not like supposed to be there type of deal. Whereas the right. color the color that I got looks like it. You're like, okay, okay, I can you know, I can pass for blending into something. It's not this like dark green that stands out out of nowhere. So is your sister in law still live in there? Uh yes. Until the end of the month, and then she's moving to a place, um, Okay. That she sublet it for two months, and then after that, who knows what she's gonna do? I'm asking for my for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so actually, she'll be out of there in uh in uh, like three days. Okay, all right. Yeah, I was basically wondering when I could visit again, sort of thing. I mean, you can well, is your guest again. bedroom gonna become Jack's room? Uh, we don't we don't know yet. Honestly, with the wife, I mean, it's got her, right? The, like, there's the no wife, other room. With the wife, no. He's gonna sleep in our room for fucking ever, and like, I'm gonna, he's gonna go to college. He's gonna need somewhere. a room, though. Kids need a room. Yeah, he'll have his playroom. To... He'll have his playroom, and then he'll have his sleeping room. <laughs> you have to evict your um your tenant, and that can be his room. Yeah, that's that, his whole apartment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he gets an apartment, right? <laughs> um, so while we're talking about redneck purchases, um, I decided so it's crawfish season, and I wanted to 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 cook some out, redneck outdoor. crawfish. Uh, well, yeah, crawfish or redneck? No, oh, I mean crawfish are just like a crayfish that you get in typically redneck areas, but everybody eats them. No, they don't. Most like, people freak I out at the thought of even true. eating Most them. Most people don't really eat them. I They're never like, really oh thought of God, crawfish as I never thought of crawfish as redneck because I've definitely gone to crawfish boils and stuff like that, and you know, never right. heard twice of it. But yeah, I guess in some areas that would definitely be a ew. most people I've talked to are like they they don't even though I mean it's basically a little tiny lobster. Um, people are like, oh, it's so it's so it's a bug, it's so ghetto and whatever. Most people I know are, are turned off by the thought of even eating a crawfish. Why is there always so many mobs? Like, why the fuck can this not be lit up in a way that makes there not be mobs? Well, and I, uh, are you down underneath or? No, I'm just up here. Well, up here it kind of sucks because basically at the end of the last video, you went around putting torches at what I was digging out up top, but I'm pretty much just destroyed a whole layer of torches because I'm digging again. Oh, no, I meant I'm up here where, like, the, the weed is. Oh. Like, oh. Uh, yeah. No. Um, well, anyways, uh, it's a crawfish season, uh, and I don't really have a good setup for, for doing a, a big boil of crawfish. Like, I've done it indoors a few times, and I basically use the same pot I use for canning. Um, it's the biggest pot I had. So I decided to go ahead and buy an outdoor pot, um, like you know, like the one you used for your video the other day. Okay. Do you have an outdoor like, um, burner and stuff? Well, I bought the whole the combo. So um, how much does it both. cost? Well, so here's the thing. I don't... I didn't know how many what a quart was i mean i don't know 
quart, 32 quart, 40 quart, 60 quart, 80 quart. I was like, ah, I don't know what to buy. So you buy like I was like, well, quart? yeah, I bought a two quart uh, pot. No, a huge pot. Um, <laughs> a two <laughs> quart pot. Uh, with I think the mine's a was, thirty-two quart. Well, it was two hundred was the price for eighty-two quarts with the with the burner and everything. Oh, with uh, the burner, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, the pots um, are pots are expensive. I bought mine. Mine's a relatively cheap pot. It was, I think, it's it a nice pot. This is a real nice pot. My daughter fits in it with room to spare. Uh, yeah, eighty-two quarts is uh, it's so big. It is so fucking big. You, you this pot came crawfish boils. Oh yeah, no, I did you I, get the strainer I could put, in it? Yeah, 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 a oh, giant fucking strainer. Nice. I mean, I could put, uh, I could literally put enough crawfish to feed thirty people in this thing, man. It is so big. It's um, so yeah, yeah. I I I did not know. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. I was like, well, what's the what's the hurt in buying just the biggest one they had? Basically, was my thought process. <laughs> Storage. <It's> like, <laughs> I mean, it is big, right? But I, I mean, I got room. So I mean, I guess that's not, it had, that's not a problem. I got room for it, um, at least. I, I'm not living in DC where where every where rooms every at cubic a, foot is yeah. a million dollars. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh. So yeah, yeah. This thing arrived, and I was like, "Wow, this is this is so much bigger than I anticipated." Two hundred dollars <laughs> seems like a pretty good deal for the entire setup. Yeah, is everything everything you need. Um, and I was thinking, you know, I've never, I, I've had deep fried turkey at Thanksgiving, but I've never deep fried my own turkey. And I feel like this thing is definitely big enough to hold the whole, the whole kit and caboodle. So I might try deep frying a turkey uh, this year too. Have you ever deep fried a turkey? I've not. Uh, I, I mean, I've, I've always wanted to, but I've never been with people who've always wanted to, you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've always wanted to just give it a shot. I've had the, the one time I had it, my uncle did it, and it was it was great. It was really good. I mean, you you know you deep fried it, a thing, it's probably gonna be tasty. <laughs> um, so it was I, it was real good. I guess I just the only thing I don't understand about it is deep, you know, you deep fry chicken wings. Sure, I know how they taste. Like, is that pretty much what the turkey tastes like? Uh, well, no, no. It was. I mean, you know why I think it's different? Because you deep fry chicken wings, and they're little tiny little chicken wings, right? But you deep fry a turkey, and the most of the meat <laughs> and is it's not an hitting. entire turkey. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I mean, really, it's an entire. I mean, turkey, let me so explain it's... to you the difference between a chicken wing and a turkey, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, One Jeff, do you is not, just do you the not wing. <laughs> That a turkey is a lot bigger than a chicken, turkey. just to begin with, and then if you just take the wings, it's completely different. Yeah, t- turkey is, is is bigger, and uh, there's more than just a wing there. Like, thank you. That's the well. Difference. I guess I guess what I'm getting at is, uh, just a wing is gonna dry out more, even though you know you things don't really dry out as much whenever you deep fry them, but they still dry out some. Versus a whole t- it it like the meat was so much juicier. I remember whenever we had the the deep fried turkey. Um, than any other turkey I'd ever had before. So that was the difference that I noticed was just how juicy the meat was. I mean, I honestly think, you know, a place like McDonald's is doing themselves a dis- disservice on Thanksgiving. You know, offer a, you know, full freaking deep fried turkey for like 40 bucks or whatever it is because they they'd get really cheap, you know, sourced stuff anyway. It'd probably be like a frozen turkey that they somehow use they have the deep fryers just start deep frying them and uh, selling them to families on thanksgiving yeah that's true that's true anyone with a deep fryer should just be deep frying turkeys <laughs> like all day every day that's all they do deep fry the turkeys why isn't there a place that's just fucking thanksgiving all the time um i mean i may i think i've asked you this before like, bob I, do evans, a, I do a couple thanksgivings bob evans is awful as well well that I should mean, be their slogan I, come on in we're awful. i i agree with you however i'm just saying like that down home country cooking or whatever isn't that basically you know i don't i don't agree i think bob evans is like a a worse cafeteria like i've had good cafeteria food but i think bob evans is a worse version of it I mean that is that that is what they're trying to sell you. What you're talking about, country home cooking that like grandma would have made, but their food is not good. So I, I dated this girl for a long time when I was in college. That for some reason Bob Evans was her favorite restaurant, and oh, Lord. So we would always go to Bob Evans, and I would pretty much sit there and get coffee because I did not like to eat the food. And I also, I, I don't know, maybe it's because I grew up in the country, so we did cook food like that on a regular basis but i couldn't understand the appeal 
of going to a restaurant just to order the same thing I was going to cook at home. And right. I, I, I was always like, if I'm going to a restaurant, I'm going to somewhere that has like steak and, you know, like Outback Steakhouse used to love it because, you know, I'm not going to sit there and deep fry a tomato or a tomato, an onion to go with my <laughs> I'm steak. I'm not either. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. It's, they, they have things that I'm not going to make at home, man. Right. I feel like, I mean, I, I want to be quote unquote pampered. And I know a lot of you guys are going to be like, oh, Outback's not pampering you. Yeah, I, I know that now. But at the time, it was like the fanciest place I'd ever been. <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna. I go to Fogo de Chao because I'm not gonna make a freaking Brazilian barbecue in <laughs> right. my kitchen. <laughs> yeah, no, I completely agree. I'm sorry, I mean, on Fogo this... de Chao. Is it the show? I, so I we have all these commercials lately. I hear for Fogo de Fogo de Chao, and they're always like, "Have you ever been to Fogo de Chao?" And I'm like, "What? No, <laughs> Fogo, de, Fogo de who?" Uh, but I, it's I don't know if they're I don't know if this marketing campaign is just like all off or if that's really the way it's pronounced and I've never pronounced it right myself and and I don't know Brazilian to know if Chao is spelled the way it is in you know in Portuguese is shown. Hmm. I would imagine the advertising campaign is uh is right right I've, i bet we've always said it wrong in the ads but right i don't think i've ever been to a fogo de chao where they called it fogo de Chão. welcome to fogo de chao i don't think i've ever heard anybody at the restaurant pronounce it fogo de Chão. i don't know if i've ever heard them pronounce it though i didn't know if it was i mean maybe they have and i just don't remember so i don't know i don't know I always say everything wrong, so I just would accept. I, mean, I immediately accept it whenever you said that, that I just always have been wrong. I mean, I would think if they really wanted it to be Fogo de Shown, wouldn't they, like, try to... Well, well, you're now you're adding an N on the end, and now I don't... No, I, no, no, that's I, what I'm saying. I, Fogo de Shown with an N. Yeah, I thought, I thought you said Fogo de, de Show was what Oh, no, they on the, on the radio, it's all Fogo de Shown. Maybe that's a different like place. Like Shonies. No, no, no. The first time I heard the ad, I actually thought it was a different place. And then I listened to it more, and they just had the address of the Fogo de Chao. Huh. Okay. It was funny. I, well, I yeah. mentioned of it to somebody at my fire department. They were like, oh, I heard that commercial, and I got really confused. And I was like, okay, it wasn't just me. Like, I'm not the only person who thought it was Fogo de Chao. Hmm. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, that's weird. I agree. <laughs> Well, thank you for yeah. agreeing. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh, Bob Evans is terrible. That's what that really all. Uh, does Bob yeah. Evans even exist anymore? Is it still around? Oh yeah, there's one near me. Is it always like honestly? Easy? If I was going to go someplace like that, I I mean I I enjoy Cracker Barrel for example. Um, and to me, that's what Bob Evans wants to be. To me, is a Cracker Barrel. I know a lot of people who love Cracker Barrel. I never got into Cracker Barrel. I I have very specific things I eat at Cracker Barrel and I like them. <laughs> I like their sausage gravy, for example. Um, I think they make good sausage gravy. Is it, it's is very that smoky. The very specific thing that you like at Cracker Barrel. <laughs> well, yes, it is. <laughs> um, I always get uh, if I if I'm there if I if I'm if I'm there getting breakfast, then it's just basically I just want egg, sausage, and biscuits and gravy. Um, so I mean, any, anyone could make that, but it's really all about the sausage gravy. Then it's you know the eggs are just scrambled eggs, and the sausage, their sausage taste. They, they have good sausage, but it tastes like the, the. I mean, the gravy is made from that sausage. So, um, <clears throat> do you have like just so, yeah. diners around? There's not any. I mean, the closest thing to a diner around here is a Waffle House. So, um, where in Michigan, where I'm from, we had what they call they're, they're all called Coney Islands. And there's just like National Coney Island, Sunrise Coney Island. Like there's just some name Coney Island after it. That's what your hmm. typical random like owned diner is. And we used to love going to Coney Islands all the time just to sit there and eat like whatever diner food and, you know, coffee or whatever. And diner food is essentially it's, you know, a little bit fancier bar food. It's pretty much all yeah. it is. It's like you can't go to a bar and order like a plate of eggs and pancakes, but you can go to a diner and order that stuff. But they'll have the stupid things like, you know, the cheese balls and the you know jalapeno poppers and all that, you know, all the bar snacks as well. And right. I, I love Coney Islands in, in D.C. We do have actually one place called The Diner in um, Adams Morgan. And I really think it was it's literally set up at the end of a, a typical bar strip. And 
it probably does extremely well because it's typical diner food and they also serve beer and it's set up in the place to be the you come here after you go to you know the bars for the night but it's like the only one and they used mm. to be on every corner in flint where i was from every time i go back to flint i always still go to the diners just because i want to get some like actual coney dogs or you know a good old diner euro is like one of the best euros i don't know Something about looking in the back, and they always have that window that you can see in the back where they're cooking your food, and that guy's always sitting there over the grill, and they'd get to know you, and they'd wave at you, and he'd have the cigarette in his mouth at the ash that was like almost like oh, falling out of food. That was the typical diner, and that was the best. Know. You know what I've hated about Euros lately is it seems like every place, yeah, even the like... Heroes and they fucking do what? Shit, people call them heroes, and you tell them they're well, wrong. Well, I mean, yeah, that and Gyros, like, um, yeah, yeah, I actually went... The girl I'm dating, to uh, she's just all and on about this Mediterranean place, and then we went there and she got a gyro, and I was like, "That's not a thing." Um, <laughs> I agree with you. But anyways, go uh, on. But uh, the and, and this place did exactly the thing I hate: um, the prepackaged gyro meat, where it's like this, like they're like microwave it or they cook it on the grill it's or whatever. Like Steakums from high school. Yeah, basically, yeah. except it's like a lamb mix or whatever, but it's yeah. not the I, fucking I, lamb mix giant slab of meat that rotates that you slice it off of right and i will tell you most diners i'm pretty sure it is that and i know that and i guess well, this was just this was a mediterranean and most mediterranean oh. restaurants now do that it's not it's not the full slab now that i find fuck, that meat. i find kind of fucked up i do also find it weird that there was this one mediterranean restaurant maybe they closed this early for a reason like they actually had the big spigot of meat, and uh, they had opened. They were not open for very long. They had the big spigot of meat, and I was so excited because it looked so good, and it tasted off, and it turned out it was just beef. They didn't have lamb. Oh, that's, was, yeah, that's weird. And I was like, um, like, you know, I want to say it's good because it, like, it looks so good, but it's not, it's not a hero. <laughs> It's, yeah, and I well, love it's beef. Be the, it's like, the meat I, mix. Yeah, it's not like I, I'm not against beef by any means. I love beef, but when I asked him, I was like, I, I told him, I was like, it tastes a little funny. Like, what is up with it? Like, what kind of meat is that? And he's like, oh, it's just beef. And I'm like, what about lamb? He's like, no, 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 no lamb, just beef. And I was like, that's weird. <laughs> yeah, that is weird. <laughs> Gotta be the mix. We need the mix. <sighs> All right. Well, we're out of time technically. So I've made we've, so we've many gone from blocks. redneck to to lamb meat. And I've made <laughs> in so many minutes. ghost blocks in here. It's so hard to walk around. I'm gonna definitely uh, log off and back on in between episodes. All right, everybody. We'll see you all very soon. All right. See ya.